Now back time. This seems going to be cool. Stick around and find out what it is. I think there'll be links down below for some of these things. Most likely. Loctite. 222 thread locker. Obviously I could have bought this locally, but it's probably cheaper to get it from China, so I did. Shame I can't read the safety instructions. All the instructions. Hmm. How hard can it be? <laughs> Hmm. Maybe quite hard. I've been to get some thread lock for ages, but I haven't actually got around to it, so I think it's like the weakest one, I believe it is anyway. It's supposed to be a small fastness up to M6. As far as getting this stuff to come out. Oh there we go. This is like a lock here. That just shuts it off. That's now shut off. Cool. That's easy enough. Nice. That big box is going to be interesting. I know what's in there. How much packaging? Seriously. I got this thinking it might be handy. Um, now I'm not so sure it actually will be. <laughs> it's a bit hard to get scale out of this. In the pictures this looks a lot smaller. Um, that ball was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more like this size. So there's a bit of difference in scale there. The other thing I was looking at is that it's got this really nice looking mechanism on but it's bolted on here so you actually if you couldn't use that ball you could unbolt this and actually attach a bracket to this of some kind and use it that way. I'm not liking the way it's got the gate in the middle there. The injection mark is going to create a weak point right there. Apparently it's a GoPro mount thing, but it's actually got a nice bracket apart from that. This is shown it's the wrong size. I'm sure it'll come in handy for something one day. Now it's back in a box, which would be a mystery forever. Ah, oh, okay. Another vent on Vention, I don't know. Vention? 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 I don't know. You can it. Um, Ethernet cable. What's it? It's a 6A cable. It's shielded ends on it. 5G first choice. They do realise that 5G is wireless, don't they? Not Ethernet. It's not the same thing. Mm. <laughs> anyway, it's 1 meter cable. I went through a little phase where I bought a bunch of cables. This one is the last one to arrive. Oh, I ordered this about three months ago. Now we've got the big box. Security checked. It's been opened up by DHL Security and checked. Hope it's still intact, okay? I've dismantled it or ripped it apart for something. Let's hope it's still all good and not been damaged. Sometimes security people draw holes into things. It'd be great if it's done that to one of these devices inside here. We'll find out. Alright, let's open it up. Break the seal. Oh, we got peanuts. Lots of peanuts. <sighs> this could get messy. Check the box in the house. I don't think there's anything else. Yeah, okay. This will wick. Might just be cold. Nice packing. I'm going to cut it out. <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh, there's a clue. Do you know what it is yet? It's ruining a surprise now. Well, there's the rear of it. And looks like calibration seal's been broken. Yeah, it has. All four calibration seals are broken. Maybe that's because it got inspected, maybe it's already broken. Yeah, I just hope that inspection hasn't caused the problem. It's already set at 240 volts, which is good. That's what I want. Let's spin it around. And there's the front. Do you know what it is yet? Well, it says so. Time Electronics Progmo Resistance Unit. 
so you can dial up the resistance you want. In theory, I don't know how well this actually works. We'll find out. Actually, we better pad it up and try it out. So, you've got off local remote uses this key which has been stuck to the side. Let's get this off. So, there's a key that goes in here to control it. Nice, I'll leave that on there. I'm actually tempted to open this up and have a look inside it because of potentially being messed with by inspection. So I'm going to take out one or two of these modules and have a look. Just in case something was damaged in it when I inspected it. I want to catch it physically before I power the thing up, you know. Hopefully it's fine, but you never quite an idea. It's there. It's just coming out. Here we go, it slides out. Oh, right, there's the module. Lovely. Nice. Okay, that's really serviceable, isn't it? And the other modules will be the same. Yeah, with a back lane. Lovely. Like that. That's a nice, simple system. Put your back lane back in here. Oh, lose the screws. No, no. It's gone to the floor of doom. The floor of doom. Hold on. Floor of doom. <laughs> My voice isn't weird enough. We'll find a screw. I think I'll pull out the power supply section as well. Just check on this one. Alright, how do I pull this out now? Get in here. That might work. Here we go. Oh, look at this. It's interesting why it's got a ground going through to the side of the case like that. We've got the ground on the side there which is causing a problem. Doesn't want to pull it any further than that. And there's actually a connector on the back plane. Okay. So, I don't want to pull that any further. I don't unplug that. But yeah, okay. That's what's in it. Looks fine. A couple of fuses in there. Full bridge rectifiers and so fuses. Quickly check those since I'm getting them just in case they're blowing, you never know. So much to check and buy some things like this. Yep, yeah, they're fine. It probably works. So as we'll find out. Alright, let's power this out for the first time. I think I might turn it off. Turn on power over here. So it turns 25 volts, so let's go slightly higher to 230. Local. There you go, you've got power. So I'm plugged into the module over here. I'm not sure how we're supposed to do this. I think maybe you're supposed to daisy chain them or something. I'm not quite sure to get the full range. So I've got it set at 99 or 0.99k. I'm getting 90 ohms because this is on one of the modules only. Alright, so this controls each module, so I think basically each two digits is one module. I think that's how it works. So there's 10, we've got a little bit of levers in C as well. Yeah, so we've got 0.2 ohms there. There you go, one ohm at a time. Eight, yep, nine, yep. So 10 ohms. It's also got a readout on the screen here as well, which you probably can't see too well. If I did the next range up, it won't be doing that module, be the next module over. Next module over, still 0.2 ohms. Yeah, 100 ohms. That looks good. So, K's, 1K. Excellent. So I think the trick here is actually put them all in series with each other and that then give it a full range. Yeah, 10k. Nice. And 100k. 
a bit of rounding going on there. I wouldn't have thought we'd be getting anything up here. These ones are interesting. Right. So this can basically do almost up to one meg. It'd be like 9999. It's most it can do. So yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so it's basically a decade box across different ranges on each module and choose different modules I think to change the decades. I think that's why it works anyway, but it's nice that it's got this readout on here that tells you if you're on a remote then you'll get different readings. Because remote control will be you know whatever you've got on the switches is ignored and it's based on that so I suppose that's obviously there just for remote. Local control is how I'd use it I think. Well probably anyway. Could be. Nice. I'm not quite sure about these resistors, I might have to check on these a bit more detail, see if these look okay or not. I'm slightly suspicious about them. So I hooked up the Bryman as well, just to see what this one thinks of it, and it's getting very similar results. These ranges are out by a little bit. So maybe these particular resistors have been stressed or something. Yeah, 100 seems alright, pretty much. But above that it's getting off a little bit. Would like more precision than that. Hmm. Anyway, it works. Yay. So I thought I'd pull this card out and actually have a close look at these resistors on the board and see what we measure there. Okay, so leave resistance 0.1 ohms. It's a 100k resistor. Oh, that's shorted. Are these shorted when they're not being used? Oh, they are. Well, that's annoying. I can't measure them on the board. Oh, that's a shame. I wanted to measure them in circuit and see what they actually got without going through the relays. Because that would tell me if it's a relay switch contact problem or if it's the, the resistors themselves. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, I was going to cheat. Damn it. <laughs> so these resistors I'm looking at here, it says 100, 200, 400, 800k. So he switches those in combination to get the uh, ranges we want. So if you want 300k, obviously you're switching both of those together in series. What we've got is actually a 0.1% for the 100k and 0.05% for the other three. So the error I'm getting there is quite significant considering the accuracy of the resistors. But it's only on this one bank which has got that problem, so that's quite interesting. It requires some more investigation, that'd be a future video I think. So now we know how the card works being a decade and why it adds the resistors together. We need to just try and diagnose briefly which resistor it could potentially be. So we've got 0.2 ohms on the meter here. Let's have a look. So 100k is basically okay. 200k is too high. Probably not too bad. Just slightly high. And 300 will be too high as well because it's adding the 1 and the 2 together. That's okay. So 400 is the next individual resistor and this one's out by that much. Don't forget, this should be 0.05%, worst case. So 400, 500 would be 100 plus the 500. So, yep, there we go, still got that one high. Okay, 1.1 1 .1 high because of that 400 resistor. 600 will be the 200 plus the 400. So that's going to be, it should be 1.2 high. Yep, 1.2 high. 7 will be the 1, 2 and the 4 together. So that's also going to be wrong. Yep. A to be an individual resistor, which is also high by 4. 9 a bit of 100 plus the 8, so it's also high. So it's the 400 and the 800, which are measuring as being a bit high, which is interesting. What percentage is that? This is roughly about a quarter of a percent, so it's about 0.27% or so. That's a significant area on a resistor, which is supposed to be 0.05%, and the 800 range. That's about 0.5%. Again, 10 times more than it should be. So that's interesting. Anyway, this will be a future video, so we've got to fix. Otherwise, it's alright. Don't forget to give a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Especially if you want to see my video on this thing when I actually try and figure out what's going on with it and fix it. And check out the videos at the end. Catch you later.